For my part, I travel not to go anywhere, but to go. I travel for travel's sake. The great affair is to move. Robert Louis Stevenson Yo! What up? Welcome to another vlog. My name is Mr. Ryan. For those of you that are new, welcome. Right now... I am in Las Cruces, New Mexico, and it is my final day on the road. I came into Albuquerque late last night, and I had other plans, but I had some company things that came up that I needed to take care of, so all morning into this afternoon I went back and forth between Las Cruces and Albuquerque so this morning I started out from Albuquerque went to Las Cruces then Las Cruces back to Albuquerque then Albuquerque back to Las Cruces and now I'm all freed up and we're gonna go check out the local monument National Park National Monument Park I don't know what it what it is but Apparently it's in my book, so we're going to go get the stamp, we're going to go check it out, and you guys are going to come along with me on my final adventure on the road, this long four day road trip across the country, because all good things must come to an end, especially my cross country road trip, and of course this will not be the last road trip, because many more road trips to come. Especially with me being an explorer. So thank you everyone for watching. Don't forget to click the like button, comment, share, and subscribe if you have not already. So after we're done here, I'm going to skedaddle on my way back home, back to Phoenix, man. And we're going to get us a little din din later because I'm going to have me a little rumbly rumbly in my tumbly tumbly. So Let's go. All right, we have made it to White Sands National Park. I have no idea what city we're in or town. It's in the middle of nowhere. So we're gonna go check it out, man. Let's go check it out. All right, we're gonna stop at the visitor center first. Looks pretty cool. Pablo style, so we're gonna go in and check it out, see what we can find. Let's go. White Sands National Monument. A vast dune field, blinding in the midday sun. Soft and textured in the early morning and evening light. Never the same twice, but always a shade of white. 275 square miles of sand, and none of it is the typical darker quartz variety found in most other dune fields. It's made of gypsum, the same white material used in plaster and drywall. Here, gypsum is the key building material, and it shapes everything that lives within its boundaries. gypsum dune field in the world, an island of white surrounded by the vast Chihuahuan desert. In a world of white dust and sand, 
most animals' chances of survival improve if they blend in. Many animal species at White Sands have become lighter colored, avoiding detection and staying cooler in the hot sun. White Sands is one of the best examples in the entire world of the process of adaptation. In the surrounding desert in New Mexico, most of the animals are dark to match the dark environment. At White Sands, many different animal species have evolved to become white to match the dunes. This is most obvious in some of the lizard species, which you'll notice are very light in color and that they match their background very well. A few thousand years ago, when the white sand dunes formed, lizards would have come into that new environment and they would have been dark. The darkest lizards would have been eaten by predators and the lighter lizards would have survived better and passed their genes along to the next generation. Over time, the lizards evolved to become lighter and lighter until we have what you see today. The reason why this is so exciting to me as a biologist is that it gives us a window into the process of evolution and it allows all people to see evolution in action. It takes a perfect combination of water, wind, and other conditions to create White Sands dune field. The key ingredient, gypsum, comes from the surrounding mountains, which are rich in the mineral. Snowmelt and rain dissolve the gypsum and wash it into mountain streams. The gypsum-infused water runs down the mountainsides. Then from the mountains, it flows to the lowest point in the monument, Alkali Flat and Lake Lucero on the western edge of White Sands. When this water evaporates, it leaves the gypsum behind in the form of selenite crystals. The crystal is softer than a human fingernail and easily splits apart. This is where the gypsum might come to rest if it weren't for another force that shapes white sands, the wind. Spring, it often blows hard from the southwest. And when it reaches 15 to 17 miles per hour, it picks up any gypsum the size of a cornflake or smaller. Like bumper cars, the gypsum pieces bounce, roll, and slam their way northeast. They start out coarse. As they tumble, they break into smaller and whiter pieces and then end up as fine grains, almost as soft as talcum powder. And in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, cattlemen built ranches in the grasslands on the edge of the dunes. They dug wells and constructed cisterns to support as many as 8,000 head of cattle. But overgrazing and drought killed off the grass, bringing this era to an end. Shortly after, President Hoover established White Sands National Monument in 1933. The primary mission of the National Park Service is to be the caretaker of special places like White Sands, passing these resources on to future generations. I look at White Sands as being an experience that you have to respect what is given to you. When Apache people came into any uh, location, they used what was needed. And when they left, it looked like there was no one there. For thousands of years, White Sands provided Native Americans with physical and spiritual sustenance. Today, it still inspires awe. Okay, the whole time the video was playing, this is exactly what I was looking at. The Turkuan Raven. The Turkuan Raven is smaller than the common raven. 
Many will confuse them with crows, but they are slightly larger and have white spots at the base of their neck. The spot is displayed only when agitated or shown off to other ravens. Photo by R. Wiles. So, just a little fun fact. And here are the few animals here within the park that adapted over time according to the sand. There's the pocket mouse, the plateau lizard, the longhorn grasshopper, the mantis, earless lizard, the camel cricket. Ooh, that looks cool. White scorpion, a moth, and another lizard, and a beetle, a stained black. Yeah, pretty cool. And it says after thousands of generations of living here, the white Jepson sand dunes, many animal species are lighter colored than their relatives just a few miles away. And of course it's in Spanish too. Pretty cool. Okay, we're done inside. So there's a hike in here, but they said the hike's not going on. And the hike's five miles because right now it's hot outside. So we're able gonna drive through the park. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna drive through it and all we're gonna do is get a complimentary map and they say it's a loop around. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out. Let's go. All right, this is actually our first plaque, I think. I think I might've missed one, but I caught this one just in time. It says, Chararan, Chararan life, Ch -ch Chihuahuan, Chihuahuan life. The coldest and wettest desert in North America. We're right here. Usted esta aquí. So we're going to be doing the whole drive. The ranger station is right there in the main road. And we're right here. Then we're going to make our way all the way around here. We're going to loop around and we're going to come back through here. And it says, this desert covers a vast area. The whole Chihuahuan Desert is 133% large, larger in size than New Mexico. You can find typical plants and animals like these in three u.s states and five mexican states chola lichiguala i am pretty sure i'm saying that wrong the soap tree yucca in other words known as coradillo uh creosta i don't know gobinator <laughs> an earless lizard it'd be all weird seeing a lizard with ears <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're gonna move on. I thought I'd just cover this real quick since I seen it on the road. So let's go. Okay, another plaque, but at the same time, it's a trail and it says, most of us decide what to wear, what to depending, blah, blah. <laughs> most of us decide what to wear and what to do depending on the weather. That playa, playa? The barren, dry, labeled bank ahead of you also changes depending on the weather. It might be brown, it might be white, it might be filled with water, or it could be growing crystals. What is a playa wearing today? Walk this trail and discover the importance of changing playa to the creation of habitat for plants and animals. Walk back in time to the end of this trail to see what you may have run into 10,000 years ago. So, so it's not that far. It says 30 minutes, but it's, uh, it's 0 0.5 miles. So it's less than a mile, even though it says 30 minutes, but uh, we're probably not gonna read through every plaque because I kinda wanna see everything and it's getting a little late. So let's go see what this trail's all about. First plaque on the trail, a desert oasis. How can there be proof of water here in the desert? You will find the answer underground. White sands is at the bottom of an enormous basin that gathers water from the surrounding mountains. This water has nowhere to go, so it sits here a few feet beneath the dry desert surface. With rains, with summer rains, the underground water level rises. It fills to it fills in playas slightly lower in their surroundings see right here when it was in the video what covered was the mountains right here and it rains and it just sits within the valley where the white sands is so it's pretty cool 
And right here it says, Salty survivalist gypsum is an evaporated mineral. The water that rises to the surface in playas is very briny. Only certain plants like four wing salt brush and iodine brush can survive in such in such salty conditions. <laughs> Tongue tire. So that's it. Four wing salt brush. Yeah, it looks like that too. And iodine brush too. Looks like that. So let's go check a little bit more out around here. All right, second plaque. Just add water. Water is a magical ingredient that changes the color and character of the playa. What may appear to be barren and lifeless is actually another hidden world waiting to come alive. So right here, shows different examples of what happens. Cool December through March. White fluffy crust. So it looks like looks like a rice cracker. You'll see it on the ground right here. And then hot April between April and June. And there's no picture describing what it looks like, but it looks kind of like brownish, like a burnt surface. That's what I'm guessing. And storms between July and August. You'll see tadpoles like in the video and brian shrimp and i didn't know that about brian shrimp that their eggs lay dormant for hundreds of years that's pretty cool and spade tad spade spade foot tadpoles or spade foot whole toads come out to play so i didn't know that that's pretty cool about the brian shrimp and warm between september and november you'll have these mirror the light crystals forming that's pretty cool and as they said in the video these are like very fragile like the fingernail it's pretty cool so when it rains here it changes the environment not just rain but the climate so it gets adjusted based on the temperatures here within the playa playa I think I've been saying it wrong. Playa. <laughs> playa. We'll say playa, not playa. <laughs> playa. Playa. <laughs> Let's go, playa, playas. <laughs>
Whoa, this is crazy. It feels like I'm in a sci-fi movie or something. Or it feels like I'm on another planet. It's just so white. And here's a plaque that says the Inner Dune Boardwalk. Take an easy wheelchair accessible stroll through the dunes and experience a different view of the dunes. How did the white sands get here? What keeps it here? And what lives and grows here? Find all the answers along the boardwalk. Shh. This is a perfect place for a quiet nature study. What will you discover? We're right here. So we're going to go all the way to here. And then we're going to go from here to there. So let's be very quiet. Let's go. And here's a plaque all the way from the road and it's a shaded area so that's pretty good. And it says, Yucca, one stop shopping. Imagine yourself living in the surrounding desert some 500 years ago. Without grocery stores, where would you get your food? What about soap and medicine? The soap tree yucca would have been your store with more than 100 different uses. So that's what a yucca is. You get the flower, you got the leaves, and you got the seed. So right here. 100% yucca, lift the panels to match the product with the parts of yucca you use to make it. So let's see, it says leaves. You can also, you can dry the leaves and weave them together for finer threads, soak the leaves, scrape them, separate the fibers and twist. So there's like an example of what they use the yucca for. Even to this day, they still do that. So these are the panels we're talking about. So shampoo and soap. You use the root and the leaves. Peel and puree the root, then dry it. Scrape the, mi scrape the leaf mixed with water, then strain the scrapings. That's what it looks like. A frittata. Man, that looks good. The flowers. Cook the petals with your favorite egg dish or add them to a hearty stew of beef, pork, or chicken. Dang, that looks really, really good. And that's a frittata. So as I said, you can make, add it to hearty stews of beef, pork, and chicken. And that's the flour. And finally, fiber art. Which is the seeds. Soak seeds in water to make a rich black dye. And that's what it looks like. Pretty cool. Really informational. And that right there is the yucca plant. Uh, let me see if I can find one right here. Right there. So that's a yucca plant. In the wild, if you didn't know. Let's move on to the next site. Whoa, 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 whoopa. I almost took off without reading these other plaques right here. This one says moths, Mars, and lizards, skizzards. What on earth or off do these things have in common? They all, they are all examples of wild science happening here now at White Sands. Moths apparently love white sands. Reacher, Reacher. <laughs> Researchers identified over 650 species of moth in just a two mile radius, 1% of the park. 35 of those species were brand new found only in white sands. So those are the white moths that they were talking about. Uh, Sister Dunes. In 2004, Mars rover Opportunity landed on a playa made up, with, made up of Gibson, just like you see here at White Sands. By studying our dunes, NASA scientists are learning more about Red Planet and possibly the future of White Sand. And that's the Mars Curiosity 2013. And it says, these crystal petals are similar to those found on Mars. And 
Those are like the petals that they're talking about. They're the ones that are as fragile as fingernails. So that's pretty interesting. And right there, hotbed of evolution. Here you can see many animals have changed color radically to boost their chances of survival. Their chances to survive. <laughs> I swear I'm just making the words up. Or I'm just making up the sentence even though I know what they're saying, but I'm just saying what comes to mind. But anywho, we know these dunes have only been here for 10,000 years. White sand gives us a chance to see evolution happening before us. As I said in the video, these creatures adapted to the environment. So according to the video, the white sands here are very different environment and these animals here have adapted to change within their environment within white white uh white dunes so that's pretty cool and this other plaque many white animals you see here like the bleach lizard bleach earless lizard once were dark as Egyptian dunes began to form this landscape became more and more white lighter lizards survive better in the dunes because they match their surroundings see that's what they look like they're brown they start to turn a little lighter and finally you can barely even see them basically they're albino lizards it's pretty cool and right here to completely change your skin in 7,000 years may seem like a long time to you. Keep in mind that human today's have the same DNAs as when the Egyptians built their oldest pyramids 4,500 years ago. But for a scientist studying evolution over millions of years, 7,000 years is a blink of an eye. Just outside these white dunes you can still find darker hollow brook. Malacusha lizards, white sand bleach lizards choose to mate only with other white lizards. Dang, they're just racist. <laughs> but yeah, very interesting. Very informative too. Okay, so this ain't nothing new. It's just um, it's just areas where people can go and camp. So if you're ever in this, if you're ever down here at the White Sands National Monument, you can come down here, bring your food, and cook up a barbecue for everyone. So that's pretty cool. There's like picnic settings and everything here. So while you're cooking, you can also enjoy the White Sand by getting one of those sandboard things i don't know what they're called slides i don't know but yeah it's pretty cool i'll need to be here because i don't have any food on me <laughs> so yeah i thought i'd just show you guys this little area it's pretty cool they even have bathroom facilities too if you guys are interested in coming here pretty cool pretty cool oh i think someone said something oh well but yeah that's pretty cool let's go Oh yes, before I forget, some parts of this road is covered in sand and other parts are paved roads. So just giving everyone a heads up if you ever come here and you say, Mr. Ryan, did I tell us some of the road was covered with sand? Well, you know what? I'm telling you now. Some parts of the road is covered with sand and some of it's paved really well. So just an FYI. Yo, what is up, everyone? 
watching. It was an awesome road trip. I got to see places where not many people can visit. And I like going to these places because someday these places will not be there. And I also want to see where my tax dollars was going. So I'm gonna show you guys what stamps I got from my stamp collection, from my travel stamp book first. Um, let's see. First one is the Gateway Arch National Park in Missouri. It's right there. That arch is right there. And there's another building. I think that was the courthouse. That was under construction, so I wasn't able to go inside. But this park is going to require a revisit, so be expecting this in the future. A revisit to St. Louis. And right here. White Sands National Park, New Mexico, Alamogordo. This is pretty cool. So, there's a National Historic Landmark right beside it. It's called the Trinity Site. And it's a spot where, where they do missile range testing in the desert. So that's what that looks like. I bought the stamp for it because I don't know when I'm gonna be back in the area is, but this is closed to the public. But they will, they do open houses every two months if I remember correctly. That's, I think that's what the ranger lady was saying. I could be wrong on that, but that's what she was saying. So this place is gonna require a revisit because I do wanna check this out and it seems like a really interesting place. And as for the other places I've been to throughout the video, they didn't have this, uh, these stamps. So only certain national parks will have uh, stamps like these. So not all national parks will have these. That's the stamps I got for my travel stamp booklet, my smaller one. And let me show you guys the stickers I got. So the first one is right here, St. Louis Gateway Arch. So I've been talking with some of the people I've been going to the national parks, the rangers, yeah, the rangers. I've been talking with some of them and they said these are going to be the new ones that they're going to be coming out with but they haven't made a book for it yet but I'm still collecting these and I'm putting it inside my scrapbook because I can't put this inside my my uh, collector's edition because this whole thing won't fit in there. So yeah and I also bought another sticker with it but I can't seem to find it. It's around here somewhere but, but yeah I'll show you guys uh, later on what my scrapbook looks like. Uh, Wadisha Battlefield is the next one right here. Shows the battlefield. And here's the unique sticker to the area. Wadisha National Historic Site. And finally, the White Sands National Park. And I was hoping to look for a smaller sticker, but this is the only one they had. It's pretty big and it's laminated and it's die cut really big so if you're new to my channel i also like to collect these not all national parks have these also so it's going to go on top and then the sticker unique to the park is going to go at the bottom normally these are like half the size of what it looks like but this is the only one i had available so i had to get that one so it's going to look like that in my scrapbook and finally my collector's edition passport book to my national, my, like I own a national park, to your national parks. So yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the places I've went and the stamps I got from there. Okay. Okay, let's start with these ones. Uh, the White Sands National Park. I got the stamp right here. And I was there August 15, 2022. So I was there yesterday, but I made it back here in time because I didn't want to get behind on work. So I did that and I got the White Sands National Monument sticker. And right here, let's go to the next one. Wadisha Battlefield National Historic Site. So I got the stamp right here and I was there August 14, 2022, Cheyenne, Oklahoma. And I also got the stamp here. 
So what's interesting about this stamp is as if you look at it really close, there's a peace pipe right there. I thought that was pretty, I thought that was pretty cool. And let me look for the other one because I thought I had it marked out, but give me a second, everyone. Oh, here we go. Uh, Missouri Gateway Arch National Park. So right here, each national park, they may or may not have their own unique stamp. Here they have their own unique stamp. There's the arch and it says the 50th anniversary. And the guy misled me. He says, oh, you're supposed to do it like this. And then it came out kind of crappy, but still I got it. And it tells me that it tells you the date of when I visited it, August 13th, 2022, St. Louis. And they did not sell the regional stamp, the old, older one. They do have the other one I just showed you guys, but they did not have this one, so I had to order it separately online, and it should be here in the next few days. And finally, let me show you guys the last place I went. Well, in the videos, I went there the first, that was actually my first stop, but in the book in the book here, it's the last place. Dayton Heritage National Historic Park, Dayton, Ohio. So right here, I got its unique stamp, and it's a stamp of the Wright brothers. And basically it says the whole thing around Dayton Aviation Heritage National Park around the whole thing. So I thought that was pretty cool. So I put that right there. I put the date of when I was there, August 12th, 2022. And of course the, its own regional stamp. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. And while I was on the road, I was really craving a salad and go. So that's what I'm having for a lunch right now. And right now I'm just at work at the office. Good to be back. And I'm editing one of my other videos right now. Oh, I'm so tired too at the same time. I wanna just go home, but I still got things to do. And I totally forgot to close out this vlog. So this ain't gonna be the last road trip. There's many more road trips to come, but this is one of many. And you guys are gonna come along with me and I'm gonna record everything, all the national, parks as many as I can visit and I think that's it oh yeah if you're new to my channel welcome don't forget to click the like button comment share and subscribe if you have not already and give myself a round of applause because I drove the whole thing I'm out everyone till next time we'll catch you on the next vlog Peace. Ah, oh, man. I know I said I give Taco Bell a 10. I give Taco Bell a 2. It is not settling well. After I ate the 1, I was like, okay, I don't feel nothing. And after I got done with my live... Uh, it hit me all at once. I stopped like three times and I I just barely now made it to Benson. So Taco Bell, you just lost yourself a customer. So I am not getting Taco Bell again, ever.